Hello everybody, AJ Rizek here and today we're going to take a look at LibreOffice version 4.4. Version 4.4 was released yesterday. Now those of us that have been playing around with the pre-releases, uh, the betas, the alphas, we've we've already been looking at this for a while, but yesterday was the official release and of course uh, the web was all abuzz with the news about the new release. Here's the official release from Document Foundation blog, and then you can see over at ZDNet, they had a little bit to say about it, and then of course every one of the Ubuntu websites had something to say about it. Oh my god, Ubuntu had it, Web Update had stuff about it. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's all over the web about the new release, and you know, a big part of it is they're they're really touting uh, working on the user interface, cleaning up the look and that. But it comes down to more than just looks. Their work on the on the user interface has also brought along with it some really how would I say it uh, changes that made sense uh, that'll make uh, using LibreOffice a whole lot more efficient and uh, let me go and pull this out of the way get get that over there and let me open up LibreOffice and uh, while I'm talking about it uh, those of you on of course the Windows uh, well actually any um, any distribution whether it's Windows, Mac uh, any of the Linux distributions, you can go to the LibreOffice homepage, download 4.4 from there. If you are on uh, Linux systems, besides going to the uh, you know going to the main site, you can go and upgrade via PPAs. At least uh, some of you can. If you're on a Ubuntu-based system, if you go and set up the LibreOffice update PPA. It will. It's already got 4.4 in it. So, yeah, that's pretty impressive that they managed to get that up and running in only one day after the release. But anyway, um, you know, lots of places that you can get it. Um, you know, the non uh, non Ubuntu based distributions, Fedora and all those. I'm not exactly sure whether it's in the repositories yet or not. But like I said, you can always go directly to the uh, the LibreOffice website and download from there. Anyway, so we got LibreOffice open here. This part pretty much looks the same. Uh, all of our most recent documents are going to pop up here and then of course over on the left hand side you can pick do you want writer, calculate, or uh, uh, calc spreadsheets, impress, you know, whatever you want to work with. Now, I'll spend most of my time in in the review uh, playing around with Writer just because that's where I spend most of my time. I do a little bit of spreadsheet work and occasionally get into impress and draw. Uh, never, ever do I go into to, uh, to base. So, uh, for those of you that use the database function, uh, you know, I really... Uh, you know, I'm not the best person to review that because I never use it. So anyway, I'm going to stick with the stuff that uh, stuff that I know. Let's go on into Writer. And if you're if you don't use LibreOffice that much, this probably doesn't look a lot different. But those of us that use it on a daily basis, you know, are going to see the the big differences. And what they've done, if you look at the toolbars here they've been reorganized and, and reset up besides using the newer uh, the newer uh, cipher icons is now the default icon which I think is a very nice looking icon compared to some of the older versions but anyway uh, the toolbars they've I guess you could say it's streamlined them the they've gotten rid of the icons for stuff that people just tended not to use very much and of course you could go in and customize the toolbars yourself and, and you know a lot of people including myself did that so that you know it kind of fit the way that we worked but at the same time you know now just 
by default it it, it makes sense um, let me go and open up a document here and and we can start looking at a few things here and up here at the open documents if you click down the little down arrow it will show the most recent documents that you've had open so let me just randomly pick one here we'll pull one up this was an old blog post that I did oh, probably about a year ago now it's been a while but anyway so okay so we got this open um, besides you know the streamlining of the title bars our drop down menus now they make more sense cut copy and paste are probably the things that you will use the most when you go and and highlight uh, a word or a section of text whatever they put those at the top of the menu it used to be like down here in the middle you had to go scrolling down for them yet yeah, not a big deal but it's these little details that they've gone through and and taken care of that will really speed up your workflow um, so I mean it's stuff like that um, on our styles okay we got you know right there it's a title style if you come over here to your different styles now you can go you got a little drop down next to whatever particular style you can right from here update it to match the selection or you can go and edit that style right from there so there's no you know opening up other menus and all that sort of thing granted you could do it from the sidebar you know but once again if you're over here using it from the sidebar it's opening multiple menus to do that you know now right here boom right from that little dialog box so like I said it's the little things like that um, down here across the bottom the status bar makes more sense now basically all of the basic data that you may want to know about your particular document is right here by default you know we got our page number number of words character number uh, what style we're using language um, you know on you know continue on over what view that we're using do we want to switch it to a two-page view or a book view or you know however we want to set that up uh, how far zoomed we're I mean it's all right there there's no going and digging through multiple menus and drop downs and all that kind of stuff to find what you need um, the sidebar is um, it's set up to run uh, or, or opened or however you want to say it you know it, by default it's the, the sidebar starts up used to be you know, you'd have to go over to um, view, click on sidebar so you get the sidebar. Once again, not a big deal. Most people that have been playing around with LibreOffice for a while, they knew how to set things up the way they wanted to. But like I said, it's just tons and tons of little things like that with the user interface. Um, same thing over here in the sidebar. They've done a little tweaking on that. Uh, it looks better. It makes a little more sense. Probably the one thing about the sidebar that I would love to see, um, if you cut this this style uh, tab or or box or whatever you want to call it, I would love to see them take that and and copy it over to the sidebar so that it's you know somewhere on this page right here. If they did that, I could get rid of this toolbar right here and give me more uh, vertical space now you do have um, you know right here if you click the 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 T right there that gives you the you know your your full style and formatting but I don't necessarily need that I basically need the function of that little box right there just added to this and then like I said, I can get rid of that toolbar right there. I've got all the functions from that toolbar right over here now. Um, and, and to me, the kind of the sidebar UI makes sense with the widescreen monitors. Um, you know, back in the days of the 
the four thirds monitors, which I actually do use a four thirds monitor for my secondary monitor. You know, having the 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 uh, horizontal toolbars, it made more sense. Now with the widescreen, I think it's better use of of screen real estate, putting everything on a sidebar. But you know, that's just me. So the improvements in LibreOffice for this release have been more than just uh, the user interface. There have been a lot of stuff, a lot of things under the hood that have been fixed and improved, that sort of thing. Uh, importing of file formats is a big one. Um, and, and there's a variety of them here. And let me go just look over my notes because I made a list here of all the, the new. I'm not going to say that these are new formats that they're importing in, but they have improved the imports in all of these. Um, Microsoft Publisher, Abbey Word Files, Microsoft Work Spreadsheets, uh, import filters for Adobe PageMaker, MacDraw, MacDraw 2, Ragtime for Mac, all of those. And, you know, I will tell you, on I, I was able to test that out on Abbey Word because I've got Abbey Word installed on this computer. I, I wrote up a few things, saved them in the Abbey Word uh uh, I don't know if you want to call it proprietary format, but their own, you know, their, their, what is it, AWZ or AZW, whatever their format is called, and then imported it over into LibreOffice. Everything imported perfectly. Uh, that all worked great. Um, and that was always one of my, my complaints about the incompatibility between the two. Now, I will lay part of that on, at least, or on, I wouldn't say part of it, the majority of that onto uh, um, Abbey Word. Why they had to have their own format, I, you know, I don't know. Why not just stick with ODT? You know, I can understand the com wanting to have the compatibility with uh, Doc and DocX just because for so many business uses that's useful. But why they didn't, you know, stick with ODT? Um, as their rather than coming up with some proprietary format, I you know I I don't understand. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent on that one. But anyway, those imported perfectly. Uh, I will tell you that they were text-only documents, and where traditionally you've seen a lot of problems is when you've got a document with say tables in it uh, or images they didn't port over. Uh, I wouldn't say they wouldn't port over, but they didn't port over well. Uh, the table would pop up in the wrong spots or be the wrong dimensions, stuff like that. But anyway, so all that kind of stuff has been imported. Yeah, that stuff's been imported. That stuff's been improved. So big thumbs up on that one. Uh, another one, PDF electronic signatures are now supported. So and that's a big deal there for uh, for all more than just business uses you know I, I know that uh, you know my insurance company has sent me documents via email they were PDFs that need electronic signature uh, you know now boom you can do that with uh, with uh, LibreOffice so big thumbs up on that one uh, another feature that has been improved is the track changes feature uh, I really haven't had a chance to test that out uh, and to be honest that's not something that I use a lot I do use you know when I'm doing uh, doing my editing and going out for the beta readers for when I'm when I'm doing my novels and nove novellas that sort of thing I do use not as much the track changes as much as the comments uh, because I'll send out you know my beta reads and have people leave comments and and whatnot. That's something that LibreOffice has supported for a while, and um, it's you know gradually been improving more and more. Um, but like I said, track changes. I really didn't get a chance to test that out. But for those of you that do use that, there have been improvements to uh, to the UI for that and. Um, you know how well it is tracking those changes and, and all those sorts of things so big old thumbs up on that one as well well I think that about finishes things up on this review 
Um, obviously, this isn't a major release. We don't see a whole lot in the way of new features. This was more about refinement and improving the user interface. And, and I mean, improving the user interface, that is a big deal because you can have the best features in the world, but if you've got a clunky interface, you know, it's not going to matter. What I think they've done here is... Um, you know they've really streamlined how this UI is set up. It makes sense. They've they've kind of I wouldn't say gotten rid of features, but they've hidden like the icons and whatnot for stuff that you're not going to use all that often, or at least the majority of people. But you still have the ability to customize these these various bars. Now some people have been critical of LibreOffice for not going to the ribbon interface like Microsoft Office does. And, you know, you, while the ribbon interface, once you get used to it, you can work pretty fast and quickly with it. It does take some time to get used to it. Um, I think what LibreOffice has done here is they've done a great job with the traditional toolbar slash drop down menus and making them make sense, streamlining it uh, so that it's simple, easy to use, and, uh, and like I said, it makes sense. Um, especially, you know, it, go and compare this to OpenOffice. Um, their interface is so close. Even though, even though OpenOffice and LibreOffice they share common heritage, compared to compared to this, OpenOffice has such a cluttered interface. You know, you, you got these these loaded up toolbars. The order of the icons on the toolbar doesn't make sense. I mean, it's just, you know, this is really what we're seeing here is refinement of that type of interface. Um, and I think that about finishes things up. Uh, one note, I am starting to set up some uh, LibreOffice tutorials. Uh, and I will set up a LibreOffice playlist so that you can see all the various tutorials. So um, I've got a bunch of them recorded so far, but at least at the time that I'm recording this, I've only got one up and running on uh, on YouTube. But I hope to get the the rest of those up soon, and I'll be recording more as time goes on. Um, you know, just stuff like how to auto create the table of contents and uh, you know how to use the track changes and you know just all kinds of stuff like that um, you know as I've been doing these LibreOffice reviews over time people have emailed me or left left comments on how do you do this how do you do that that sort of thing so I just figured out hey, let's do some tutorials anyway give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the review uh, please leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below and be sure to subscribe if you want to keep seeing this great stuff and I will see you on the next video thanks a lot